and welcome to this new episode of Brain and Spine Surgery and I am Dr. Jayadev Panchavab. Today I want to discuss with you five things that you should know about sciatica. Many of the patients who come to our spine clinic have asked me to make a video on this subject and that's why I am making this subject. The first question that we have to answer is what is sciatica? So in short sciatica is a pain which starts in the region of the lower back and spreads to the leg starting from the low back either via the buttock and posterior aspect of the thigh then into the calf and into the foot or sometimes it can radiate on the outer aspect of the thigh then into the calf and then into the foot. So sciatica is a symptom it is not a disease it is a symptom. Next question that we want to discuss is what is disc prolapse because most of the time sciatica is caused by disc prolapse though there are many other reasons for sciatica. Now disc prolapse occurs because the soft portion or jelly like portion in the middle of the disc slips into the spinal canal and starts pressing on the nerve that is going out that is exiting from the spine and going towards the leg. The disc has got two structures outer structure is called as annulus fibrosis, the inner structure is called as a soft jelly like nucleus pulposus. Now the outer structure because of various reasons it can tear and when it tears the inner soft structure that is nucleus pulposus comes out and starts pressing on the nerve that is going to the leg and then you start getting the pain. So here you can see the normal disc, these are the two vertebrae these are the two vertebrae and in between these two vertebrae this is the disc intervertebral disc and the central white portion as is seen on the MRI is the soft nucleus pulposus and the black portion is a tough annulus fibrosus. Now if you see carefully here the annulus fibrosus is torn and the nucleus pulposus which is seen as a white structure here is herniated out or slipped out and as you see very carefully you will realize that there is a nerve which is looking like a black thread like structure and this slip disc is actually pressing on this nerve and that is why in this particular case there was sciatica that is pain radiating along this nerve into the buttock into the posterior aspect of the thigh and then into the calf. So the third question that we have to answer about sciatica is how is it diagnosed. Now if you look at this picture you can see the MRI of the spine and that exactly is the answer of this question that MRI of the spine is the investigation of choice for diagnosing sciatica if you are thinking in terms of sciatica of spinal origin. And in this particular MRI you can see a prolapsed disc pressing on the nerve which is giving rise to severe sciatica. There are other modalities which need to be used in cases where you are thinking about other causes of sciatica like sacroiliac joint dysfunction which is mimicking sciatica. In that case you will have to do MRI of the sacroiliac joint. So MRI is the investigation of choice. If you feel that MRI is showing some instability between the two vertebrae, one vertebra is slipping over the other, then you may have to do what is called as dynamic x-ray. In this procedure we ask the person to stand and bend forward and take the x-ray in that position. Again we ask the person to stand straight and take the x-ray in that position and we compare these two x-rays. We see if these two vertebrae are moving in relation to one another in these x-rays. So uh, x-rays, MRI and in some cases CT scan is required for diagnosing the exact cause of sciatica. The fourth question that we have to answer about sciatica is how is sciatica treated? Now if sciatica is minor that is it is not giving too much trouble then it can be treated conservatively with a good physiotherapy care. But before deciding on that, that line of treatment we have to know the exact cause of sciatica because very rarely a tumor can give rise to sciatica like symptoms. So in that case you cannot treat it conservatively. So after diagnosing properly the neurosurgeon will plan the exact physiotherapy that is needed. 
However, if the severity of the pain is increasing or remaining constant, not reducing in spite of a good quality uh, physiotherapy care or over the counter analgesics, then one has to consider surgery that is surgical option. So, the surgical option takes us to the fifth question wherein we need to answer what kind of surgery is available for sciatica. Now, there is no simple answer, but there are various modalities which need to be used to treat sciatica. We use what is called as endoscopic discectomy, microscopic discectomy or at open discectomy with fixation of the spine depending on the individual case. Endoscopic discectomy is a procedure in which a very small endoscope of the size of a fountain pen is passed uh, to the site where the disc is herniated out and that portion of the disc which is pressing on the nerve is gently taken out. This procedure can be done under local anesthesia or general anesthesia and usually it is a stitchless surgery. At the most sometimes we need a single stitch there. The second option is that of microscopic discectomy in which we use neurosurgical microscope to perform the discectomy. Uh, this takes uh, nearly the same time as endoscopic discectomy, but there are instead of one there are two or three stitches. In both these procedures the person is allowed to walk after the surgery maybe after about 6 hours in case of microscopic discectomy and 1 hour in case of endoscopic discectomy. The third choice when sciatica is either caused by instability of the spine or you find that in addition to disc prolapse there is instability or if you think that after removing the disc there is a likelihood that instability uh, will actually happen then one has to combine removal of the disc or decompression of the nerves with fixation of the spine. And in such cases if you do either endoscopic or microscopic discectomy and you do not fix the spine it will be a wrong choice because the symptoms will ag get aggravated. So, coming back to what I was trying to say again this each and every case of sciatica has to be individualized and the treatment decided depending on what exactly is the diagnosis in a given case. So, I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this video, you have understood these 5 important things about sciatica. If you want to know more about brain or spine disorders, please subscribe to this channel. I will be regularly updating this channel with new videos and there are lots of videos on this channel about spondylosis and sciatica and uh, spinal surgery. Thank you very much again and thanks for watching this video.